uh, mucor mycosis came into a lot, light, lot of limelight in the second wave of COVID, as we all know. And uh, the incidence of uh, mucor mycosis otherwise uh, is very low. It's an infection caused by a fungus, which is basically a saprophyte and uh, would happen uh, to only those people who have some comorbidity have uh, a very uh, bad or uh, very low type of immune system uh, immune uh, immune immunity in them so that that uh, really sparked off uh, a much thinking of why it should increase why the numbers should increase in the second wave of covid there are many hypotheses we'll try to look at it uh, uh, as I would like to share my screen with you. So, yeah, so let me share it. COVID-19, uh, as we know, it causes high morbidity and mortality. The treatment cost also increases with uh, this particular malady. And uh, during the second wave, we saw that there was a shortage of antifungal drug. This was simply because uh, this, uh, this this particular disease is so rare that uh, storing these antifungal drugs was not one of the priorities. But then uh, that led to a shortage of antifungal drugs. And we all remember those times when amphotericin B, uh, what we all had to do for, to get them. So the uh, increasing incidence of mucormycosis in COVID-19, it became a matter of concern globally. It was, however, it was more common in India. Before pandemic, uh, the annual reported cases were only 9 to 25. And if you see the quantum leap, it is 11,000 cases during the period of the second wave. Government of India declared it as a notifiable disease on May 20th, 2021. So this, this was the seriousness of the whole, uh, whole uh, episode of mucormycosis in India, particularly during the second wave of COVID. It's a potentially lethal disease, as I will show you all the all the numbers which I have from uh, Sassoon Hospital. You will be uh, you you would understand that it's potentially a lethal disease. It's angio-invasive fungal infection, and uh, as I told uh, earlier, the problem lies with the immune system or some malady which the person suffers from like diabetes mellitus or the person is on corticosteroid or even a suppressive therapy he has some immunodeficiency disorder has a hematological or solid organ malignancies has undergone an organ transplant or he has iron overload and there are other other factors are also involved so why was there an upsurge of mucormycosis in covid-19 patients Many factors were speculated. Now, I would like to underline this particular word, speculated, because we still don't have an evidence-based studies uh, which, which would increment. Uh, of course, we have a study here. I will tell you about it. So, indiscriminate use of steroids, use of contaminated mask accessories for oxygen treatment. This we uh, did in our institution, and we found that, no, that was not a problem at all institution, at least. Iron and zinc supplementation because we know that these uh, metals are useful in the growth of the fungus then industrial oxygen versus medical oxygen this was also a huge controversy uh, we solved it at sasun we examined all the uh, the cylinders whether they contained any fungus any mucor mycosis uh, mucor in that and we found that no nothing of the sort was there so this was also ruled out by our study then mutant strain of coronavirus, this also is ruled out because it was Delta and Delta sublineages, which were very common in that particular period. Uh, Delta was uh, seen uh, since December in our place and the, the problem started a bit later. So let me tell you about what is what was there in Sassoon Hospital. Uh, we screened about 1000 patients and after screening them we had to admit 584 patients uh, different departments look after these patients major is uh, ophthalmology and ent so luckily we could discharge these many patients of the admitted these many died so that i told you that it has a high fatality rate and this is proved from these numbers that the fatality rate is quite high 
And it's also very costly because if you see here, uh, amphotericin B injections, these many doses, 26,000 doses were used for treatment of the patient. And then what were the predisposing causes? It was diabetes, malignancy, and steroid treatment. So I think this is hard facts which are based on the studies which we have at Sassoon Hospital. Then uh, how did we manage the patients at Sassoon? Medical management was used for 500 or patients, 576. Surgical management for 554. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery was conducted in 378. Maxillotomy uh, was done in, maxillectomy was done in 137 debridement here. So there were so many of these surgical procedures which were carried out. In fact, uh, we had a very nice team with us from ophthalmology as well as our ENT team. Our ENT team uh, headed by Dr. Samir Zoshi was instrumental in doing the highest number of operations for uh, mucormycosis uh, in India. And uh, the claims of ours is that it is highest in the world. Then as regards to what we got in microbiology laboratory, I have the data of till um, 21st May. We have 357 samples which came to us. KOH received by 383. KOH positivity was 121, that is 39%. And culture positivity was 22.7%. Uh, there is a scope for increment, improvement here. And certainly high media would come up with uh, methods which we can use later on. So what were the fungal uh, cultures which we had? Aspergillus was seen in 49 patients, that is 60%. And zygomycetes, uh, we'll come to know later that this term is no longer used, uh, 32, that is 39.5%. Rhizopus, rhizomucor, mucor, absidia. These were the major organisms. Uh, a, a bit of what is this uh, fungus? Because now there are... Uh, the, the older terms like zygomycota are not, no longer used. So what we use is, this is uh, the latest classification of uh, fungi. Uh, we have two major groups, the basal fungal lineages, also called the lower fungi, and subkingdom dicaria, that is the higher fun fungi. So the fungi included in basal fungal, uh, fungal uh, lineages uh, were previously called as zygomycota. Now, uh, this phylum, I have placed it in inverted comma. They are primitive, they lack a complex protein body and have a co-enocytic accepted hyphae. So this was the, this is the most important finding which we have to understand and remember when we are looking for them under the microscope. They produce a sexual spores called sporangiospores and sexual spores called zygospores. Now, this is no longer accepted in the current fungal classification. So this is the classification now. The organisms which are important for us, these are the three organisms which are important for us, and they come in the subphylum mucor mycotina. So this is gone, this is in. These are the general characteristics. Most of you know them. Most important, I would like to highlight, non-septate hyphae. This is the main and very, very important. Then broad hyphae, that is what the same thing. They are very broad as compared to dicaria. Then uh, this is how they look on the culture. They have this sporangium. Most of you would identify them with the help of this sporangium and these rhizoids. So these are the differentiated, the rhizoids are the differentiating thing for different species of uh, mucor. So what are the organisms which are which we see which which are important which cause uh, mucormycosis these are the ones they are the, the species of muca rhizopus rhizomuca absidia cunningham mela saxenia fo5 physomyces these are the ones but then the most common are here on the top so what is the etiop etiopathogenesis of this particular disease one thing which we have to understand very clearly, and it is these fungi are saprophytes. So they generally subsist on organic matter, which is found in the surrounding. Very rarely did, do they cause infection in human beings. 
but whenever they find an area which is full of organic matter and your immune system cannot reach there due to some reasons they can grow in that particular environment macrophages generally tackle uh, this particular organisms but then they the mycelial forms become resistant but they are taken care by monocytes and polymorphonuclear cells the only problem happens when a particular person has diabetes or he has an immune compromised state due to some problems with his macrophages or polymorphonuclear cells so in normal circumstances you are not going to get it because most of the person can tackle it very easily with the help of monocytes and polymorphonuclear cells but then if you have an area which have a lot of uh, lot of uh, dead matter then you cannot let uh, you cannot stop these organisms from growing in that particular dead matter one more very important thing which we have to understand about these fungi is that th their feeding habit they they have a hard cell wall and therefore they cannot engulf anything just like our macrophages or uh, polymorphonuclear cells they cannot engulf and eat what they have to do is they have to depend on the enzymes which they release on the outside then digest the substances there and then absorb those material in so they have enzymes which are toxic to our body which they release and go on destroying our tissues so if you have a nidus for them to grow maybe in the sinuses or any other place where you have dead tissue and it's growing there then it can go on destroying the tissues it can grow go on growing in the in the blood vessels and then it can block those blood vessels and causing ischemia in that particular surrounding grow in it still produce more enzymes and then it can go on penetrating deep inside through the sinuses and can reach the eyes can reach the brain and ultimately kill the person so that is to be understood of what happens we'll still go further uh, what are the diseases which are there uh, this is one rhino orbito cerebral mucormycosis i just now told you that uh, it is in the sinuses that it can grow how how are you going to suspect it nasal blockage or congestion and nasal discharge facial pain or numbness initially most of the patient were missed because uh, this this uh, was not uh, people were not aware of this thing but then slowly and steadily all the patients who had facial pain numbness swelling headache or vital pain they were caught so what would happen is the patient would come due to orbital pain to an ophthalmologist or due to congestion he can go to an ENT specialist or here due to toothache or loosening of maxillary sinus the dentist were the first to catch this particular patients so for rhino orbital cerebro, cerebral mucormycosis it was a combination of three uh, specialities which were very helpful in identifying the patients of rhino orbital cerebral uh, mucormycosis then what about pulmonary mucormycosis you have fever and cough and these are the findings there hemoptysis is one of them and worsening of respiratory symptoms now to begin with covid has a respiratory symptoms but if they go on worsening you have to suspect pulmonary mucormycosis Q uh, cutaneous mucormycosis uh, it's a painful skin lesion hairy pus you can see the pictures here also have gastrointestinal mucormycosis and disseminated mucormycosis for disseminated mucormycosis the immune system has to collapse for this particular thing to happen how do you identify it with the help of radio diagnosis these are very important findings which you can see contrast enhanced mri and ct scan then uh, you can see mucosal thickening with regular patchy enhancement these are the early this is the early sign then the black turbinate sign the fluid levels in sinus thickening of medial rectus is an early sign of orbital invasion and the reverse halo sign on hrct this is useful to differentiate from aspergillosis then sample collection this is important for microbiologist you can have an endoscopic collection high nasal swabs one portion in sterile saline for microscopy and culture other portion in formal saline for histopathology this particular investigation is also important because it shows invasion nasal and corneal scraping or crusts 
then uh, swabs are not useful. This is to be understood. And you can also have a bedside inoculation on sabras dextral agar. Now, this is very useful. And then for pulmonary mucormycosis, you can have bowel sample. Then non-bronchiatic lavage, CT guided biopsy, collected in sterile bottle and transported immediately to the lab because you want to grow them as fast as possible. This is what you see in microscopy. You have a please clear, please have a look here. They are broad, don't see any septa, and the angle here is obtuse. This has to be noted down. Then this is again on KOH preparation. Here you have. You actually see the fruiting bodies here. Similarly, year two, so we see very carefully the the hyphae are very thick, and you don't see any septa. This is calco for white. And this has a very short turnaround time, forty-five minutes. This is how it's seen on sabrot dextrosaga. Growth occurs in twenty-four to seventy-two hours, so it's generally it's very fast growth. All saprophytic fungi grow very fast. And then these are the culture media which we use. I am sure that this would be elaborated more in the lecture to come. And then uh, this is how we do it. This is how we see them under the microscope. And this is how the growth is seen. These are the these are the these are the uh, these are the pictures actually from our lab. These are actually these are not from textbook. These are our pictures from our lab. I told you about pathological uh, diagnosis, and I told you that it is very important uh, because it shows hyphae uh, showing tissue invasion, which is confirmatory of invasive mucormycosis. So this is how it looks under the microscope. Here you can see the hyphae similarly. Yeah. Molecular diagnosis are uh, not very widely available commercially. And this is important, DNA probe using 18S submitted. It has, uh, in bacteria, it is 16S. In uh, fungi, it is 18S. Then susceptibility uh, testing. This would be dealt in more with in the next lecture, I suppose. So broad dilution methods by CLSI, itraconazole and triazole. And uh, we also have E-strips to do it. Malditoff is also useful in places where it is available. For sensitivity testing. Coming on to treatment of mucormycosis, this is the most important thing which has to be done. Rapid correction of the underlying predisposing factor. Second is surgical debridement. Now, this of the necrotizing tissue. If it is feasible, and this was done and in our institution, where this is the most important thing. We have to remove the necrotizing tissue because. The organisms are growing in the necrotizing tissue, secreting all the enzymes for destruction. So if there is no nidus left, then uh, even the penetration with, uh, because if there is a lot of necrotizing tissue, then the amphotericin B, which you give, may not even uh, reach those particular places. And therefore, surgical debridement is a very important uh, treatment, a uh, part of the treatment for mucormycosis. Antifungal therapy, that is in the form of amphotericin B and the newer antifungal drugs. And other therapies, hyperbaric uh, oxygen, it can be considered. But generally what happened with at our place was this was the main thing and this was done. In addition to uh, correction of the predisposing factor, that is diabetes. It's the ideal treatment, as I told you previously, is surgical debridement followed by antifungal drugs. So this is how it was given. Liposomal, uh, let me tell you that these are the best which we can give, but they are very costly. And uh, therefore, amphotericin B as such without a liposomal preparation can also be used. Then these are the newer antifungal agents. These are the dosage. In a bit more details, you can have a look at it. Then how to prevent it? We have environmental interventions. Now, this was tried in our hospital. We did uh, this thing very uh, rigorously. Uh, then uh, these are what should be done to prevent it. 
then uh, intervention on patients and healthcare workers all healthcare workers to follow preach hand washing is more important five moments of high hand hygiene all the time patient should wear n95 mask and good personal hygiene then medical equipments and medical device we laid very high emphasis on this one uh, the icns should survey uh, the, the most important thing is that we have six icns who can who do uh, this survey and uh, did it during the whole covid period humidifiers for any dirt dust mold strain or any odd odor then only sterile saline or distilled water should be used no tap water no tap water to be used then uh, oxygen mask and nasal cannulas should be cleaned with soap and water if oxygen mask and nasal cannulas have to be used for different patients then it should be sterilized with eto this is only in the case when you are not able to get new masks ideally a new mask has to be used but this because of the problems of supply which were there these are the methods which can also be tried then uh, ppe is essential then the parts of ventilators to be clean this was actually done by us all these places were cleaned and uh, we were able to reduce uh, we were able to see that none of uh, our activity led to any mucormycosis in any of the covid patient admitted in our wards so all these things were very essential and which we had done and we had not a single case of uh, uh, mucormycosis in our wards because of this methods which were very rigorously carried out and then mucormycosis at home after you have been treated these are the these are the this is the care which has to be taken so what are the take home mess messages mucormycosis is caused by saprophytic fungi of the order mucorels they are ubiquitous in the environment infection is caused by entry of spores spores are also ubiquitous they enter body by various routes predisposing factors like uncontrolled diabetes increased serum ferritin in steroid treatment main thing risks so this this leads to mucormycosis particularly in patients with covid warning signs unilateral facial pain with or without swelling intense headache lethargy along with brownish blood stain nasal discharge basis of diagnosis is a high index of clinical suspicion this is most important mycological processing of identification and imaging for prognosis ideal treatment for muc mucormycosis is this one surgical debridement followed by antifungal drug now this let me again emphasize on you the highest number of surgical debridements and all the procedures surgical procedures were carried out in sasun the highest in the world strict monitoring in the presence of risk factors and timely treatment in presence of warning signs can prevent all the complications of mucormycosis these were the references which were used and i thank you thank you so much sir for this uh, really very interesting session on mucormycosis so now without uh, uh, any further uh, delay like so we should move on our, our another presentation so it is going to be presented by dr rahul ji wakre so just uh, have a short introduction first so dr rahul ji wakre has completed his masters as well as his doctoral research in microbiology from institute of chemical technology mumbai later he enrolled as a research in biological warfare program of the us navy and continued working with the department of cellular injury walter reed army institute of research maryland us after returning to india he developed an entire range of animal free microbiological media and introduced a fully automated plant for the manufacturing of the ready prepared media in india he represent bureau of india in standards as a technical experts in food microbiology at the iso technical committee with you for food testing so uh, what you dr ajes afternoon and uh, thank you very much for microbios to give me this opportunity to speak uh, mucormycosis uh, big honor to speak uh, to be in a forum along with dr rajesh karekarte uh, he is a stalwart in this field and uh, whatever he has 
what the information he has given us is uh, believable, and I don't think we can find it in such a compiled and a concise way anywhere in the, in print. So thank you, sir, again for all the valuable information. Uh, Media, as we all know, uh, is a manufacturer of diagnostic uh, products for microbiology. So uh, COVID was a challenge and uh, we rose up to it, uh, making diagnostic kits, sampling kits, and PCR tests along with the uh, extraction kits. As at the same time, uh, mucormycosis came in and uh, everybody, there was a huge panic. Uh, how should we diagnose this? Uh, a lot of hospitals were calling us up. What media do you have? What can you do? How can we proceed with uh, identifying this, isolating this, maintaining this? Uh, what stains should we use? So uh, there are very few, uh, I mean, uh, very few uh, senior scientists uh, who were able to get this together. So with their help, uh, we were able to put together a few things uh, which uh, made this uh, process much more easy. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's easy in a way from a diagnostic point of view. From a clinical and a patient care point of view, it was a humongous challenge and uh, the reality we saw uh, Dr. Sir presented, Dr. Karek, that uh, 99 out of 400 in just one hospital is a huge fatality. And uh, so I guess uh, we should be all prepared. And early diagnosis is the key for this. Fortunately, uh, the patients, all of these patients were COVID positive. So dealing with them was a big challenge. And uh, uh, there were a lot of social implications in this whole process. So, but I'm uh, glad that the, uh, the medical microbiologist fraternity stood up and they lived up to this uh, challenge and uh, they delivered. So I guess uh, uh, I will talk a little bit more about how high media played a role in uh, helping fight this pandemic uh, uh, in India because this was, as Sir said, it was declared as a pandemic by the government of India. Cases uh, were... Uh, Tune. So I will, uh, since Sir has covered most of these topics, I will kind of uh, dump a few slides where uh, most of the information is uh, about uh, the, the, the different genera and mycetes and how and which are the ones causing uh, some data which uh, I like to present uh, in terms of how this disease has poured or how this disease has uh, progressed over the years how it took an exponential uh, spike during the epidemic of COVID. In this slide, we see that uh, 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 one of the most reported causative case of uh, uh, mucormycosis in India was rhizobus oryzae. And uh, uh, Sir also mentioned, uh, Sir has a lot of aspergillus there uh, in his hospital. Uh, from Pan-India, we got different feedback. And on depending on that, uh, I will... Uh, we have presented this data. Now, most of this data comes from uh, reported publication uh, from uh, GIA Chandigarh, and, uh, where they reported that Pan India uh, during the pandemic, uh, 45,492 cases were reported positive uh, for uh, this epidemic. And uh, uh, there were various challenges in this. Uh, so, if we just try to break down this, uh, data that what were the biggest cause. So it comes out that surplus orise was the 60% or 59% was the causative agent of uh, uh, the pandemic or the uh, mucormycosis pandemic. And there were a lot of other species. Uh, so section of uh, uh, these back. So the challenge when it comes to the kind of epidemic is first is early detection and is identification is treatment. Uh, so what treatment do you give? Uh, so their antibiotic sensitivity, it plays a very important role. And antibiotic sensitivity uh, has to be carried out in the stipulated time. And we should not forget that uh, all these patients are already in critical care because of COVID. Uh, there is another more. Uh, so if you see, it was commonly in the newspapers, everybody was calling it the black fungus. Uh, it, it need not necessarily be only black fungus. There are all different types of funguses which cause uh, uh, mucormycosis. Yes, the 59% uh, rhizopus oryzae is a black fungus and it was the biggest causative agent. But there are also other reported cases in India itself. 
where uh, the black fungus uh, was or the rhizopus was uh, this causative agent. Uh, this sir has covered. I will go through this. What is important? Uh, the detection of mycormycosis. This is very important because uh, first is sample collection using a swab and a transport medium. Now we saw during the pandemic uh, that sample collection uh, was very uh, had become a big deal, uh, especially for COVID. And now when you're looking at sample collection of mycormycosis, you're already dealing with a positive patient. Plus you have to go to all these. Uh, accessible uh, devices and uh, sinuses of uh, the patient in the sample. So sample collection is a challenge uh, because unless you have a proper sample, uh, you cannot really further go ahead and uh, uh, isolate it uh, to the AST or carry out further. Uh, uh, sample collection was is important. Transporting the sample to the lab, enriching the sample, isolation, isolating it on a selective agar. There is uh, most of the after isolating it on a selective agar, then uh, comes in important characteristics like identifying it. Uh, staining is a very important and a faster method. It's still the gold standard, and uh, uh, we also had uh, developed two rapid. Uh, uh, I mean, I won't say rapid, but uh, test kits in a matter of few days, uh, which were uh, published and we got it validated uh, from various laboratories where they were working. And uh, so, and comes the most important part is which drug of choice uh, is has to be used where antifungal susceptibility is critical. And uh, here, uh, as Sir mentioned, that uh, the expensive drugs uh, were not easily available. Even though they were expensive, people wanted to pay. The government was pitching in, uh, but uh, they were not easily available. So, what would be the second best, third best? And that was where. Uh, uh, that all this decision is dependent on uh, how we uh, 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 do the anti but antifungal susceptibility. So uh, let's go get into the classic protocol of antifungal susceptibility testing or uh, uh, the classic detection of mycosis testing. So uh, a sample collect using a swab uh, transferred to the lab, enriched for uh, 48 to 72 hours, uh, then uh, presumptive identification. Uh, using either, uh, which I'll mention ahead, uh, using a biochemical uh, method or a multi or uh, uh, and then further going for antifungal susceptibility. Rapid detection, uh, I will do this more, uh, where we have special media for safe sampling of transport, one step selective isolation of the agent where you reduce the whole process of enrichment. So you're saving almost two days here. An advanced method of rapid detection up to species level as fast as less than a second. We have rapid methods where once you have growth, then you can uh, transform it and then go in for antifungal susceptibility. So uh, because as uh, we saw that during this pandemic, uh, because of one infection, there were multiple infections and obviously, uh, the reason being uh, excessive use of steroids, uh, patient having uh, diabetic uh, predispositions. So uh, multiple infections were being observed. One of the most common uh, secondary infection which was being observed was candida. A lot of patients who had mucormycosis, uh, black fungus, were also having white fungus or white uh, candida. And uh, so treatment of both these was very important. Uh, it had to because not necessarily whatever antifungal which might work for the mucorails might not work for candida. So it was very critical that we detect both the infections because otherwise if we treat one and the other one is neglected, that could be could have been fatal. Um, so uh, diagnosis and detection of multiple infections was uh, of critical importance here. What we did is we put forth to a, uh, a very uh, rapidly a kit together where it was easy for the doctors. Uh, what was happening is they had to order medias. A lot of these medias were not available in hospital. So we said that we give you a kit which will take care of your basic requirements up to uh, uh, the selective culturing of the media. And this we put together and uh, we gave it to Pan India where uh, there was a sampling kit. So this kit contained a, a sampling kit, 
uh, plates for rapid identification. And then uh, further, once this was done, then it could be carried on on the Lurent Nagar for anti stability. Uh, so this is a kit content. I will uh, discuss. Uh, so this one step solution for isolation of mucormycosis fungus. So sample collection. Uh, preserve then there's a high fungal transport medium. This preserves fungus specimen for isolation up to 72 hours. So if there was a sample co collected remotely and uh, had to be sent to a centralized lab, so this uh, sample collection and the transport media was very important. We had a support. Uh, we had a media which supports rapid and selective growth of mucormycosis fungal pathogen. We uh, did a lot of uh, study on this. The isolates which we were uh, shared by various hospitals uh, and depending on that uh, as sir also mentioned that this fungus goes grows very rapidly because uh, uh, it is in the right state of growth already in the human so as and it comes in vitro it grows rapidly so we saw to it that this is uh, this happens and the, the early growth of the fungus is possible then uh, we also made this into a lockable plate so it is very easy for the uh, uh, so this plate is locked and we all know that once fungus grows it just explodes into the plate and so uh, this was developed so that uh, people can uh, carry the plates around it's locked and there is not much uh, uh, contamination of uh, areas around this because uh, at the end of the day uh, in many smaller setups the people who do this testing are carrying this fungus back to the ward or doing sampling so it is very important that it stays content in the laboratory or in the incubator so uh, we and sir did mention all the precautions uh, which have to be taken and were being taken by all the microbiologists uh, which we know this is one product which we thought will really help this product uh, this uh, uh, pandemic because uh, containment of this fungus is very important and uh, most of the laboratories being in the same hospital where there are a lot of other covid wards and people moving in and around and we have seen that a lot of uh, infections move in and around by medical practitioners it is, uh, it is unintentional but a lot of uh, md uh, multidrug resistance bacteria and fungi are carried around because a technician working in the lab might go have tea with somebody who is working with the, uh, the nurse and that. So it's very important to contain these uh, uh, cultured bacteria and fungi uh, in the microbiology laboratory this is the transport media which uh, uh, supports growth or supports the uh, so it safely transports and viability it supports viability of the fungus for 72 hours. Uh, this is the mucormycosis selective agar, which is basically uh, a modified media where uh, it uh, of uh, uh agar. It's a uh, so it also was given within 24 hours. This was for candida, as I mentioned, that uh, candida was a secondary infection was seen in majority of patients with mucormycosis so it was also critical to detect and uh, uh, see whether which uh, more than which candida it is it was critical to find if there is candida or not and what is the antifungal profile of this particular uh, this thing so both these parallel uh, detections were are there as a part of the kit so I will skip this slide because uh, it is just basically how to do the sampling and sir mentioned that which way the sampling has to be done. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, it just gives you that once you take the sample, you transport it into a tube, directly plate it out on both these medias, uh, <clears throat> mucormycosis selective agar and the candida selective agar. And within the uh, observed you can observe the results within 24 to 48 hours, depending on how the pathogen is growing. So this was how it was easy. So there is no, it was not necessary for the laboratories to make medias, make slants, transfer them. And once you have these growth, then you can do anything up from here. So uh, what we came up with is this kit, uh, which is a rapid identification kit. Uh, it basically is a lateral flow device for mucorrhis. And uh, we did a few clinical trials and we now are able to uh, supply it. Uh, uh, so it was one of the uh, fast uh, tests which we could put out. So this basically detects a micro uh, and uh, 
So here we can see different species of uh, rays which were detected from using these test kits, uh, uh, right from Rhizopus oryzae to other clinical isolates which we received from different hospitals, and it gave perfect results. Uh, so the uh, uh, the kit was is, is very good in terms of sensitivity and susceptibility. And uh, the staining, staining, uh, like sir uh, mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, that uh, staining was used extensively to identify and detect. So uh, we came up with this whole series of stains. Uh, we had a few of them in our portfolio, but one or two we had to develop uh, last minute, and we did. And they they were they were used also. They are working right now. So uh, the entire stain portfolio also was put together for new process. Uh, Malditop, uh, sir had mentioned in his presentation that it can be used for detection and confirmation of this. Uh, and as we know that it is a upcoming, uh, uh, I mean, this it is present in many laboratories in India today. Uh, it's a very easy way of detection and i'm sure uh, in the coming years if we have to face hopefully not and any, any other pandemic uh, this is a very important tool and it did play a very important role in this pandemic also where it was early, early detected information because the detection time is uh, really really small matter of uh, 15 uh, 10 to 15 minutes, you're able to process a sample and detect it in a matter of few seconds. So this is a big uh, through and we have this product also available with us. Now comes the antifungal portfolio. So here, uh, this was uh, uh, initially, of course, uh, a lot of doctors did a basic study and then they decided that amphotericin, liposomal amphotericin B was a drug of choice. And they had to deal with a whole uh, lot of uh, other challenges like getting it across, affordability of the patients. So there's a different aspect. But getting the drug, choosing the drug was of uh, prime importance. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, amphotericin B was more effective. But in some cases, they found other drugs also effective and which were also available. So most of these clinicians uh, managed this in a very uh, nice way. Uh, in for the easy detection of antifungal uh, susceptibility, we had developed a portfolio which was already there. We just put it together and made it easy for the end users to start using it. Um, these are the few kits uh, which we put together. Uh, most common of, among them is different concentration of phytericin B and uh, single disc. So this is how it has shown results for black fungus as well as white fungus. Uh, this is antifungal susceptibility testing using our media, which I had shown in the previous slides. Uh, you can, uh, this is how it was showing growth and uh, fungal. Uh, uh, we also put together an uh, easy MIC or uh, some people uh, only knows an e test. So uh, we had an entire portfolio of uh, e-tests, which again was very useful to detect the MIC. In such cases, MIC becomes critical because as it is dealing with a immunocompromised uh, patient who is on the system, so, uh, we developed a complete line of MIC strips. Uh, here we can see the picture of how uh, the MIC growth is observed on these plates using the MIC strips. Uh, in, we have another high comb product, which is very similar to the E strip or the easy MIC strip. Uh, it's a little cost effective solution. And uh, here are how it looks and how we can use it. Uh, one very important kit we put together is this broad dilution method. Now, broad dilution method, even today, is considered as a gold standard uh, for uh, MIC. And uh, we put this kit together of the most eight critical antifungal uh, agents. Uh, this kit is a very user friendly kit. You just, uh, we've already done the dilutions, just has to inoculate, and uh, dualization is completely manual. You just pull out these strips and place it on this chart, and you can come to know the MIC. So, in this case, uh, this is an antifungal MIC uh, of mucor mycosis from a patient isolate of amphotericin B. And here we can find out an amphotericin B MIC value for this patient isolate is 0 0.025. Uh, 0 
So uh, this is uh, another which we had uh, set it up, and uh, this is right now being used extensively in many laboratories because uh, broad dilution method has better uh, reproducibility and results as compared to Kirby power. But anyways, both the products are global standards, gold standards for uh, testing of uh, antifungal agents. So um, with this, I will uh, uh, conclude my presentation. And uh, uh, I would like to thank the entire uh, um, medical microbiology fraternity of India to support us in uh, first giving us a lot of clinical isolates and second uh, helping us validate our products using these isolates and uh, using them third using these kits to actually uh, detect mucormycosis in early stages um, and uh, we were uh, we wanted to and uh, so this was a very good collaborative uh, effort by industry as well as uh, academia and uh, and uh, we would like to thank them. Also, Kare uh, Karte, who was very supportive in giving us all the updates, what is happening in this field right now, for the infections, uh, how, uh, where is this pandemic moving towards? So, and with this, uh, I will hand it over to us. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, interesting session. And uh, now I would like to request all attendees, if you have any questions or clarification regarding any of these presentations, you can simply write to here at Q&A tab. Otherwise, you can raise your hand. You can directly ask your question with the speaker. So, uh, uh, sir, uh, there is first question for you, Dr. Rajesh, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the question is acquired uh, Charitha Devi. Is asking, uh, sir, whether only COVID patients are susceptible for mucormycosis and why this uh, outbreak was not reported before the COVID pandemic. Is this, uh... yeah, let, let us let us try to understand it very clearly. All the uh, organisms which are included in mucormycosis, they are saprophytic in nature. They are the spores are found everywhere in dust and every other place. But they don't cause infections commonly because you have a normal immune system. And therefore, as long as your immune system is normal and you are not comorbid, your polymorphonuclear cells and macrophages do take care of this particular spores. They don't germinate and live in your body. What happened with uh, COVID was a bit different. That was the persons who had COVID already were uh, having some comorbidity like diabetes and others. And in addition, if uh, and uh, steroids are a form of treatment, particularly if the patient becomes serious and steroid, as you know, inhibits the immune system. And therefore, there was a huge sort of number of cases which were increased. And as you know, that if you give steroid today and to, for the doses to taper off, for the steroid to go away from your body, it takes almost one to two weeks. So it's a huge time period in which your body is susceptible for fungal infections, particularly this uh, fungi, which can go and cause, uh, which can grow in your body. So that is how it was. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the answer. Hope, Sarita, are you satisfied with the answer? Sir, here is uh, one another question for you. Uh, it's like, uh, is Mr. Sahil, he's asking, um, which is the best method to control mycormycosis at uh, ICU setup? Uh, yeah, what we, I, I think I demonstrated all those things. I, I showed it in the slides. What we did was we kept the environment safe. We kept the environment safe. We were very vigilant, continuously seeing for any signs. Then all the, all the masks which were there for oxygen were kept very clean. The water which was used was sterile. It was never used. It was not a, uh, and, and the, and if we had to at all reuse the particular mask, we had saw to it that they were ETO sterilized. Then the minimal of uh, treatment in form of steroid has is necessary. If you don't need steroid, you don't have to give it. So these are the these are the things which you you which you take in an ICU. And basically, ICUs are clean. So that that question generally doesn't arise. But then still, because we are very close to the patient, we are putting something in it because. Oxygen therapy was the most important therapy which was done in the second phase of uh, second wave of COVID. And uh, all the things which came in contact with the patient had to be hygienic. 
so and all the uh, all the persons who took care of those patients had to take care so that they won't be making the that particular area contaminated so that was what is to be done in an ico and that was actually followed in our hospital to see to it that not a single patient of covid had mucormycosis in our hospital we get, got patients from outside but then these were the care which was taken by our hospital infection committee under, under the control of microbiology and all the nursing staff and the other staff did respond to that particular uh, that those particular things thank you so much sir thanks for the answer hope sahil you satisfied with the answer uh, rahul sir there is one question i think he is asking uh, uh, from uh, his name is justice walab walaboa from uh, kemo quick limited nairobi kenya possible you share the presentation of slides yeah sure uh, justice uh, request you to kindly share me your mail id uh, and will share you uh, share with you the presentation ppt with uh, and if you have any more clarification regarding any of uh, Equipments and culture media of high media. You can directly write to me. We will convey your question with uh, Dr. Rahul sir, and you will get the answer. It, even if you have any more question, you can simply write uh, uh, here only. Uh, so I here, will in touch with Justice. Uh, we know Kevin Quip, uh, so that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Hope Justice, you are here, and you are like uh, uh, sir is asking. Uh, he will be in touch with you. Um, uh, Rajesh sir, here is one question from Deepak Mehta. He is asking, I have a one question with respect to committee members for concern that in first wave, we did not hear anything about uh, mucormycosis even in news. But in second wave, there were many cases, in, fa in fact, high rate in Haryana and a specific region. So should we yeah. repeat in third wave, especially when there is new outbreak of mutation of COVID viruses in South Africa named Omicron? which may or may not be in India. So is it an alarming situation? Uh, over to you, Rajesh, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the number of patients uh, which were there after the second wave were astronomically high as compared to the first wave. Large-scale treatment also happened at home. So home quarantine was also very commonly done in, in the second wave. That was not the case in the first wave. And uh, therefore, close monitoring of the patient, particularly in relation to steroid treatment or their comorbidities in the form of diabetes, uh, could not be seen uh, by the physicians who were there. So because admissions, uh, as compared to the admissions, home uh, isolation was more uh, often done. And therefore, these patients did land in, uh, in did land in the hospitals later due to mucormycosis. That was number one. Secondly, as as regards to the new variant, variant uh, uh, right now uh, I had to leave this particular meeting and go to that particular meeting also, where the task force had uh, asked me to come and uh, inform them about what to do with this particular new variant, which is going, which, which is first identified in uh, South Africa. Uh, this variant has uh, many mutations, uh, which are 30 in spike protein, so it has a chance of beating uh, uh, Delta, but it has to be seen of what happens in uh, in South Africa. Other measures would be taken by the government, whatever they are to be taken, and we'll have to be ready for that. The only positive thing between the second wave and the third wave, it, or it comes, is that with the vaccination has been very nicely done, and therefore there is something which we already have in our body, and that is the antibodies against uh, COVID virus we already have. And therefore, uh, that would be a very important factor to see how the, uh, the pandemic evolves. If at all we get a third wave or not, that would be determined by this particular additional thing which has happened to us. Between the first wave and the second wave, we did not have a vaccine. For the second wave right now, we have the vaccine. And therefore, let us see how this particular intervention of human beings is responsible for the changed evolution of the pandemic thank you government is taking all its efforts right thank you so much thank you so much rajesh sir for the answer hope for deepak is satisfied with the answer uh, is there any more question if you have any more question you can simply write here at QNET app we'll convey your question with uh, our speakers I have a question to you, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, this new viral fever uh, which is going on right now, uh, is that something to do with atypical corona? Because uh, few have reported uh, bad HRCT scores after having viral 
infections but covid negative uh, and this is rampant right now in mumbai so just uh, i am nothing to scare the audience but just wanted to know is there any correlation or uh, and of course we all are vaccinated so we are all getting negative but uh, is there any correlation uh, right now after we, we are uh, very actively in genomic sequencing and we haven't found any uh, of the uh, latest variant which is there we haven't found out we are trying to we are trying to uh, see for that government is geared up for that number one number two this particular uh, virus can be identified easily by rt pcr test the only thing that is there is it misses uh, you would miss the s gene but that is useful only if you are going to use a kit uh, which has the s gene in it because there are no mutations in the other gene region like the n gene or the orf or the or, or the e gene there are no no changes there therefore identification of this virus even if it comes to india is not going to be difficult by rt pcr the only thing is the s gene there is a deletion in that particular area and therefore you won't get a positive s gene signature in an rt pcr but then you would get the other genes as positive so that question of not being able to diagnose this particular uh, variant is out of question it would be identified by rt pcr and if we do the sequencing we would be able to identify it uh, very easily. So that is not a big problem for us to identify. This new virus which is going on uh, could be a flu or an influenza virus it is having the osmia and all these kind of effects which is very common to COVID. Yes, sir. So I would like to inform you that anosmia and all other symptoms are common with all respiratory viruses. So that that doesn't prove that corona is somehow a, 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 is not showing up and yet you are having it. It's nothing like that. RT-PCR is such a sensitive test uh, and a specific test that missing with RT-PCR is going to be difficult in any case. So th that that I would like to specify that no, we, we don't miss uh, coronavirus uh, by any other means. And there are many viruses which produce anosmia. And uh, we have the data uh, of the uh, from NIV because uh, we send many samples to NIV for diagnosis of other viruses. And what we have seen is that now you get infections or respiratory infections with other viruses also, like influenza, para-influenza, and uh, various other viruses. So, uh, and that is a very good sign for that matter. Because in the beginning and in the second wave, all respiratory infections used to turn out to be corona. Now, if some other viruses are finding their way to cause infection, is a good sign that way, a good sign for us that somebody else has a chance of infection. So it's a, it's a very unfortunate what I'm saying, but still that that tells you something that, well, other viruses are also showing that they, they can cause infection and they are causing infection. There's a mixed, there are many of, we see more than one virus in a particular child. That is what we are seeing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for like uh, this, have a discussion here. Sir, I think uh, there's one more question for High Media. Uh, asking my Pradhna, he's, he's asking, thanks for organizing such an informative workshop. As a student, I just wanted to ask, does high media offers or any dissertation or research project on such recent topic? Or... Yeah, Pradhna, better uh, you yeah. can write to us and yes. you will get the reply from HR team of high media and definitely uh, you will get supported there. Uh, we, we do support students in academia and uh, we would be more than happy if in your laboratory you have a setup we will be more than happy to work on a collaborative research uh, using our products but uh, we do support and we do fund uh, research projects and we'll be more than happy uh, if you want to work on this topic you have a setup and if you are from a medical setup you are sitting on a gold mine of clinical samples which most of the industry is after and uh, so uh, we'll be more than happy to work with you. And uh, we have a lot of students who we help and support in this uh, in, any, in any field. So let us know. Uh, we'll get in touch with you. And uh, so definitely, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your reply. Uh, thank you, Pradhana, for raising your voice here. Is there any more question? You can simply write to here or, or uh, uh, you can uh, mail to me. Uh, and we'll convey a question with the high media team.
sir uh, dr shivani m prajapati shivani i am just making you one mute you can directly ask your question if you are here shivani uh, you can uh, speak here we just unmuted you dr shivani if you are here you can speak directly if you have any question go hi uh, hi dr shivani you can write your question here or uh, if you want to say directly to our speaker you can directly speak from your like uh, audio we just unmuted you you can speak now right away only or you can simply write here we'll transfer a question with the speaker Can I ask one question? I am Dr. Girish Majhan here, yeah, India. Yes, yes, sir. Dr. Karya Karte, one uh, curious question. During this uh, mucormycosis, amphotericin B, of course, you tell the reason, you know, why it has become so important. Now, uh, last decades, there are so many antifungals are developed. Scopangine, anadular fungine, postcoagular fungine. These are not used at all. Or, I mean, what is the next level of choice of drug? Or, uh, if there is no amphotericin B, what is the other choice of drug? No, I had I had mentioned it in my presentation that uh, is the newer drugs which can be used. But then, uh, to be very frank with you, uh, we mm -hmm. did not need need any any of those drugs uh, to be used, uh, particularly in our patients. And uh, initially, we started with liposomal uh, amphotericin B. But then later on, we turned ourselves to uh, the routine uh, injectable uh, amphotericin B because of the cost variation, which uh, cost cost which was there. So that is uh, that is how we we saw whatever we saw in this particular pandemic. This is how it was. Turning to a newer antifungal uh, did not take place, uh, fortunately, in this particular pandemic. But then we'll have to be ready with the other drugs, and we can test them in our labs by the sensitivity testing using high media, uh, high media uh, drugs and all, and we can do that. That is how we look at it. Newer drugs are going to come; they have a different um, um, uh, way of action. But then amphotericin B does work. That is what we saw. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the. Shivani, I think uh, you're not available here. You simply texted me hi, hi here. If you have any question, you can write here. Otherwise, you can mail to me at like kumar at the rate microbiosinda.com. Yeah, Shivani, I can, I can see your question. Please write uh, something. You are only writing hi. Dear audience, if you have any questions, you can type here. I think she is not available to ask the question here. She is only uh, texted hi. So <laughs> just give it. Sivani, you can mail to me if you have any question. I'm just broadcasting my email ID here. So we can.
I think uh, there is no more question here. So, so thank you all for attending this, uh, uh, making sure your attendance today for this interesting session. And uh, I would like to say many thanks to Dr. Rajesh and Dr. Rahul sir for giving your valuable time for today's session. It was really very fantastic and very, you know, very informative sessions. As we are like, uh, it was like questions since long about black fungus, black fungus, and black fungus. Really, it was very interesting uh, presentation presented by you and Dr. Rahul sir. Dear attendees, if still if you have any questions or clarification regarding any any type of presentations, you can simply write to me or high media team, and uh, you will will convey your question immediately with sir. Sir uh, uh, Rahul sir. Uh, that justice is asking sorry uh, just as possible you share the presentation slides regards justice yeah i already uh, told you we'll definitely share your presentation uh, presentation uh, with you after the session dr rahul will share with you he's repeating same questions i think again uh, you, you will get the ppt and other details justice i'll i'll deal with it don't worry yeah, yeah. Hey, see, sir, he just posted same question four times. <laughs> I think uh, let's uh, ignore it for now. We'll, yeah, we'll... Now, now he got it and now he's asking uh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sure, Justice, you will get the PPT. So I think it's uh, good to go, sir. So there is no more question, I think. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Varke sir, for inviting me here. And thank you. It was a very nice time with you. I just had to leave in between your lecture and attend the task force meeting and come back. So okay. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, thank you, Twinkle. You are asking thank you. Thank you for attending today's session. Uh, you will get the feedback after the session. You can put your clarification there also. Thank you, Rahul, sir, for uh, joining us uh, today's session. I would like to thank Microbios for hosting this and uh, Dr. Rajesh to uh, give us valuable time and information. Uh, very rarely we get all this uh, data and information. So thank you, sir. And uh, we would look forward uh, for such more informative uh, I hope not related to pandemics, but just to share your knowledge about what's uh, what are the new advances in medical microbiology and things like that. So, I appreciate it. Surely, surely, much. surely we'll do that. And let me tell you that uh, we at uh, GMC, uh, at BJGMC, we have done more than 6 lakh tests for COVID by now, uh, both the RT-PCR as well as antigen test. And we have been responsible. We have coordinated for sequencing about 20,000 samples from Maharashtra. I'm very proud to tell you that Maharashtra is the highest sequencer in whole of India. The whole of the India is on one side and Maharashtra is on one side. So that is what we are doing. Yeah, so that is what we are doing. We, we are doing it at BJ. And uh, we, so uh, we are very deep in sequencing and would certainly like you to have a collaboration with us, in particularly in this particular field. Yeah. Fantastic, sir. Great. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank so, you again. Yeah. <laughs> thanks again, sir, for giving your precious time today. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good to go now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.